Hi, um, you're welcome to Photographics Academy. Please, before we start, make sure you click on the subscribe and the notification button. So you always get notified every single time we drop a new video. So in this one, we're going to be learning how to quickly fix our skin. Uh, let's just call it how to quickly do your skin retouching without going through a whole lot of process, not and bone, frequency separation and all of that. Just a quick one, if you're in a hurry and you need to fix your client's image, the fastest way you could do it, just very simple, press Ctrl J, then invert it by pressing Ctrl I, change your blend mode to vivid light, change your blend mode to vivid light, go to filter, other, high pass, zoom in a little. So you're going to blow it until, you're going to keep increasing the number until you are sure that your skin is smooth. So I think I'll be leaving mine at 24, depending on the resolution of the image you are doing, let's try 22 because I'm seeing some irregularity. So I'm, I'll be using 22, press OK, then go to filter, go to blur, Gaussian blur, drop it down, drop the, if you, if you keep increasing it, the textures will, come, will keep coming back. So you have to reduce it until you have fixed all the blurry, all the uh, blemishes you would want to remove from the image. So I think I'll be using two, two will be fine, press OK, then apply a black mask on the layer so hold your alternate clip on your layer mask it's going to apply a black mask take your brush the shortcut is b and start painting over the skin very very simple so just paint it over your skin but please very very important avoid the edges because it's going to look weird for example if i paint it here see it's looking weird so don't paint on the edge avoid the edge so we have, i'm going to be fastening mine up so i don't get you bored with a, with a lengthy video, but please take your time and get yours done. Once I'm done with fixing mine, I'm going to come back, you hear my voice again. Alright, so I'm back. So this is before, this is after, this is before, this is after. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm showing you. This is before, this is after, this is before, this is after. So take your time and fix your own very well. So the next thing we're going to be doing is to balance our skin tone. If you look at the image, you're going to notice a lot of irregular colors. So what are we going to do? Create a stamp visible layer. You can press Ctrl Shift Alternate E, or you could just create a new layer. Still press Ctrl Shift Alternate E. It's going to create a stamp visible layer above the image. So go to your gradient map, go to your gradient map, minimize it, hide the gradient map so we can select our skin tone, hide the gradient map. So you can use the gradient map already, the default gradient maps in Photoshop to just edit the skin, but I want to generate it from our skin so it still looks very, very realistic. So click on the black point, which is the shadow, select the darkest part of the image somewhere here, click on the white point, which is the highlight, select the brightest part of the image somewhere here, then create one more in the middle, select any part that you could feel is the middle, maybe here, press OK, press OK, go back to your layer, go back to your layer, open it, go to your layer mask, go to select subject, go to your color range, then you can use, just select skin tone, Photoshop is going to automatically select your skin tone, you can equally tell it to allow you sample by yourself. So I think I'll be using the select skin tone. It's giving me a good job. I've seen the selections already. So you can increase the fuzziness to make it soft, to make the transitions very soft. You can say detect face, whatever you want to do, press OK. So if this doesn't work out for you, you could go and try other ones. Press color, select color, reduce the opacity or the fill. Anyone just drop it down. So this is before, this is after. I don't think I love what I'm seeing, so let's increase it a little. Okay, so this is okay, just that some parts have not received the color. So I'm going to manually paint it in into those areas, somewhere here, like this, somewhere here. 
So we're going to paint in after painting in. Ah, it doesn't look good on the arm. We are going to paint in after painting in, then we'll start modifying it somewhere like this. You know what? The color range I used didn't work. Let's sample it manually. So we'll just go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Color. This thing is not working. So go back to your select color range. Go to sample color. Yes, sample color. Select one part of the skin. Go to add, go to the plus one. It allows you to add. So just drag it over the skin tone. It's going to select other parts like this. So I think I'm getting some of some part of her hair somewhere like this. Of course, we are going to modify that later. Make sure you are adding all the skin tone like this. All right. So press OK. Press OK. It's going to limit the color just within the selection. Change the blend mode to color. And change it to anything you want. Maybe soft light will do. Let's reduce the feel and see what soft light will give us. I think I love soft light. This is beautiful. So the only issue now is that we are having it on her hair. So how do we do that? Just clean it out. Simple. Use your layer mask. Make sure you're, you're selecting your background color is black. And just paint it out of the hair like this. Very simple. Just paint it out of the hair like this. So we don't need to bother about the background. It didn't enter the background by default. So you need to zoom in a little and make sure it's not in her eyes and all of those places. I think we need it a little more inside here. I just paint it in. So we are going to remove it from her eyebrow. Her eyebrow should be black, so like this. Remove it from the other one as well. Okay. Check if it's in the eye, just to be safe. Clean it out, clean it out. Okay, so I don't think I want it on the lips, so I'll remove it from her lips. So that it looks realistic. Yes, like this, beautiful. So zoom out, this is it before. After, before, after, we just drop it down a little. What if we increase too much somewhere here? Like this. Okay, so we're going to be running a quick touch and burn on the image. Go to your curve, select your curves, darken it like this, darken it like this. Go back to your curve layer, double click, and limit it just to the shadow. So just drag this out and split this by holding your alternate to make it soft, like this. This is a quick touch and burn. Change it to soft light if you wish. It's going to make it darker. Reduce the opacity. Reduce the opacity. I think I need a little bit of it. So we just have to increase, bring it out a little like this. Make it very, very soft. Press OK. Then we need to do for the shadow, for the highlight as well. It's too much somewhere else. So this is before, this is after. We need to do for the highlight as well. Go to curve, increase it like this. Beautiful. Then do the same, repeat the same process. Now we are inverting it. We are doing it the other way around. So this is the one we are dragging like this. Okay, so I think I have gotten it on the highlights. I want to split it open. Limit it, just make it tiny so it doesn't cover the shadows you've gotten already. Somewhere like this. I think it's too much. Hold on a little. So just take your time and make sure your own is looking good. Press OK, reduce the opacity. Reduce the opacity. I think I don't want this thing in soft light. It's adding color to the image. I would not want it to add color. I just want it to add contrast. So I won't be need to change the blend mode. This is too much. Reduce it a little. So just group both of them. You can just reduce the, the whole overall opacity of the dodge and bond. Okay, so this is before, this is after. Let's do a little uh, enhancement to the hair. So increase the brightness, just focus on the hair this part, this time. Go back to your blend beef and just, just focusing on the hair. Take it away from the highlight, from the shadows, I mean to say. Focus on just the highlights in the hair. I guess beautiful. Press OK. Press Ctrl I. Staying on your mask. Press Ctrl I. Use your brush and paint it in like this. Sorry, paint it in like this. Don't worry, we are going to fix that. Paint it in like this. Reduce the opacity. Rather, reduce the size of the brush. Take it away from the edges of the hair. So we are, what, what, the next thing we are going to be doing is to reduce the overall, overall opacity of the whole effect. So just drop it down like this. So it doesn't look weird. It doesn't look weird like that. So we'll do for the shadows as well. So this time we are darkening it. You guess that, right? 
like this beautiful. So go back into your blending and separate it from the highlight like that. So drag it out like this. Just make sure you are targeting your shadows. Make sure you are targeting the shadow like this. You need it deeply in the shadow like this. Beautiful. Press OK. Invert the mask again and paint over. Just repeat the same process like this. Or rather, there's something we could do. We could just copy this mask and place here and it will take care of it. So what do we do? Just hold your alternate, drag this mask, place it over this one. It's going to replace the original mask, then drop the opacity like this. Beautiful. So let's group the hair together so we can see what we've done. So this is before, this is after. Just a little enhancement to the hair. Then this is it for the uh, dodge and burn. Then this is it for the whole color grading. This is where we did our retouching. So we're going to create a stamp visible layer and apply a global color effect to it. So that it brings everything together. So press Ctrl, Shift, or Panic P. Go to your Lightroom or your camera roll. Whatever you want to use is basically the same thing. So I want to cool it down a little. I feel it's too warm, but I think the warmness is fine. Let's leave it at that. So add a little contrast, reduce the highlight. I think it's being too profound for the mouth. For the face, increase your shadows a little. Then we're going to be adding a vignette effect just from here. Increase my, I'll increase my vibrance a little. So go to your effect, go to effect, just add a little vignette effect like this. You can open up, you can make it, make it come closer to the middle, you can make it go to the edges. So I think I want it towards the middle, like that. Then we should locate somewhere, we'll call, yes, this is the highlight. So you need to open up the highlight a little, so it doesn't darken the whole image like this. So you can change it from highlight from priority to color priority to paint overlay, whatever you want to do. But I think I just want it as my highlight priority. Okay, so this is it. This is before. This is after. I think I want to add a little color to it. Just tint it up a little and we are done. Thank you for watching this video. Please take your time and get yours right. See you in our next video. Click on the like, the subscribe and the notification button to always get notified every single time we drop a new video. Thank you.